This podcast is sponsored by nobody. Don't be a scaredy cat. It's Janice Blythe, Ruby from the Hills Have Eyes. And you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past. So just tune in and have a spectacular Halloween. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past. The only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things could get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend... Janice Blythe, who played Ruby in The Hills Have Eyes. She's coming back on today. She has an event um, this upcoming week called Go Off Without a Hitch, and we're going to promote it today. I'm also going to acknowledge the 45th anniversary of Drive-In Massacre and um, Eaten Alive, which some people, some sources say it came out in 77, but some sources like IMDB says it came out in 76, so might as well talk about that again as well. And it's going to be a great conversation. I just love Janice. She is just so fun, so open-minded, and just a great lady. And it's going to be a great third conversation today. So yeah, here is my new interview with Janice Blythe. Hello there. Hey Janice, welcome back. How are you? Well, I'm sitting outside in beautiful Palm Springs, 86 degree weather. Enjoying the beautiful blue sky and warm temps, not too hot. How about you? Well, we have nothing but cloudy overcast over here in Reading, and um, it looks like it'll probably be raining the next day or two. Oh, really? Yeah. Aw. Maybe I'll send you some sunshine. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Aw. So, how are things now that the world is opening up again? Starting to, isn't that nice? I'm doing an event on the 20th right. at a bar called Quad in Palm Springs right. at 200 South Indian Canyon. That's at the, it's a video bar. So it's the corner of Arenas Road and Indian Canyon. And it's going to start at 6 o'clock. Right. And they put together a bunch of my films right together, and they have a lot of screens in there. And they're going to show the footage. And going to have some, I had some stickers. The Hills Have Eyes stickers made up of my image. Mm-hmm. A little thing. And pre-order some t-shirts and sign some autographs. And, and that's my first time being out in the public since this COVID thing happened. Nice. So are they, So is this event like an honor? Are they honoring you? Yes. Wow. That is, that is so cool, isn't it? I mean, you must have yes. been, you must have been yeah. in tears when you found out about this. Well, they did it two years ago, and uh, it was like I was, uh, someone introduced me to them at the last minute, and so they, oh, yeah, and so we did it, and then we thought we were going to do a screening right. of the hills, and we had a, a difficult time getting the rights to the, they got the wrong, they got the new film, so the original film, and um, so that kind of got messed up, so we are doing the bar, though. We are going to go forward with the bar, and then maybe next year, it'll be our 45th anniversary, which I cannot believe it, and... Um, and I asked Michael, maybe he would come down, you know? Yeah. Perhaps. You know, I interviewed Michael last November. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was great, but oh my God, he was deeply affected by the election, like big time. And like, we talked the, the night before for like 30 minutes on the phone, and he was just telling me, oh my God, <laughs> I have never seen him like this ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can be very political. Yes, he can. Yeah, I just, I just it was it was it was kind of funny, but also kind of sad yeah. too. But I hope he's in a better place now. Well, he's he's doing a lot of uh, conventions. Just opened up for him, and he's he's booked through November doing conventions. Right. But I went on my you know I got Fire Stick now. I'm so proud of my little Fire Stick, my Amazon Fire Stick, and I found um, the Hills Have Eyes, Hills Have Eyes Two, mm-hmm. Black Will Conspiracy, all for free on Tubi. Tubi. TV and free TV and movies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an app that you do on your smart TVs or your phone, whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, Eaten Alive is on Plex for free. Wow. And Phantom of the Paradise is can be rented. Amazon has it for rent, um, three ninety nine, or you can buy it for nine ninety nine. Which means to me, you're buying just the the Air Vision. You're not getting a DVD in your hand. <laughs> you know, you're getting. Right, you're just buying the stream. I guess you don't 
They don't buy these things anymore. People still like to touch the, you know, the artwork and have the covers and everything in their hand. Right. They're not that easy to find. Right. I think Amazon and Netflix, though, need to buy those movies. I think, you know, they need to be seen on those platforms because they're so popular now, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially right now, this time of year and everything. I love this time of year. I mean, do you have a big lot big lots where you live? Uh, we do have a big lots, yeah. Okay, well, I was shopping in big lots in Halloween aisle, and a couple was there with their kid, and they're laughing, and the kid's giggling, and they're looking at stuff, and I said, oh, you guys like Halloween, just talking to them, and yeah, I said, you decorate your whole house? Oh, yeah, we love it, and I started to leave, and I turned around and said, do you like horror films? Oh, my wife loves them, I said. Oh, really? Do you know The Hills Have Eyes? Oh, that's her favorite movie. I said, really? Well, you're talking to Ruby. And they both just stood there and stared at me like, am I full of it or what? You know? <laughs> I have this mask on and a hat on. I don't know who I am. And I gave them a couple of uh, information that they would know it was me. And um, they were just so thrilled. Uh, just they followed me around the store. It was so cute. Aww. So nice. Yeah, it was really nice. They called me Ruby as we're leaving the store. You know, it was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she was a bad character and that uh, you're such a sweetheart of a lady. Yeah, I found uh, fans at the uh, recovery when I had some surgery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the nurses in there. Mm. Yeah, the Kills fans, uh, the, the cashiers at Rite Aid, at Big at uh, Food Select. I mean, all of these places that you know, I don't talk about myself. And when I bring it up, they all go, "What?" You know, and and then they and I said, "Well, I, I'm glad you don't recognize me because I'd be kind of insulted if you said, oh, there's Ruby.' Because I, you know, I was pretty scrawny with my hair all in, my teeth were black, and I wouldn't want anyone to say, "Oh, there she is." So. That's okay. People don't recognize me from that movie. Yeah. <laughs> when did you have <laughs> When did you have surgery? I had surgery in July. Oh, this past July. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had to have a hip replacement, um, and I just too much action is wore out. I guess. <laughs> wow, my mom had my mom had some work on her hip uh, back in July as well. Yeah. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. I don't know what she had done, but it's it wonderful stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's just it's it's kind of scary how when you get to a certain age and uh, your hips get to a certain way, and then uh, my mom in particular, she has to have steroid shots, you know, in her hips, which is kind of which is good, but also bad because you know she puts on weight, you know, from the steroids. But um, you know, it's it's crazy, you know, how well, age does have a. a, a Factor in it, but not not all the time. I mean, yeah. I had to have my hip done. Oh God, over 14 years ago, because of for a fall that I had in a restaurant Ooh. as a waitress. I had wow. a slip and fall. They picked up the rugs, and the floor was wet. And I went back to put my order in, mm -hmm. and I went zoom and bang. And it took, you know, it took a couple of years of being in pain, and no one could find out what it was. Because you're too young to have a hip problem, so they're looking at my at my spine. I mean, everything they were doing, everything but my hip until eventually I had nothing left to look at. And he went, oh, look at all that. You know, our spider just set in. What happened? And I told him what happened. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, age doesn't always have a play in this one. Yeah. Accidents <laughs> do. Can you believe that it's been 45 years since Drive-In Massacre? It's going to be 45. No, I can't. 45 years coming up next year, I'm told, for Hills. Yep. Which we just no, I, I, don't, I can't believe it because I don't feel like that at all, I and mean, it's just so weird. It's just time is like I don't believe it. <laughs> I just don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's a great movie though. I love that one. The little B movie we did at the drive-in theater. Yeah, and I remember the, the first yeah. time the first time you and I talked, you told me that uh, you had always hoped that you would never die in a movie. But I'm curious to know, like, how was your death scene executed? Well, I never said that I never hoped to die in a movie. I just um, turned on the character. I mean, that's that movie. I definitely, I definitely died, and that was totally okay. Uh, my boyfriend gets out of the car, doesn't get back in. Right. He gets, I guess, killed or whatever, and. Like I can remember, I guess the guy comes around to my side, and all well, I remember is what I did. I remember that. I, you were hanging. I think it just wrote, and then I, I, I had to go out and do the, 
driver's door back, you know, upside down. Yes. And hang there and googling and dying. Yeah. That was my very first die scene. Yeah. Not I, you think. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I see it I see on, on, uh, on the covers of the movie and, you know. Yeah. They, I never really died in. They say that when you hang upside down, the blood flows from the brain. Yeah. The blood was flowing. They put fake blood on me and it was flowing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a colleague of mine just interviewed uh, Norman Sheridan. Um, John Goff put him in touch with him, and John put me in touch with Norm today, so hopefully um, I'll be talking to Norm soon. Okay. Yeah, I listened to that interview that uh, my colleague did with him, too. He, like, became a professional poker player or something after that movie. Really? Yeah. I'll find That's out. I'll find out more. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've talked to, you know, so many actors who dropped out of the business and did other things, but, like, never, like, a professional poker player. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I got something for you. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I played the plug at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. They never get upset. I just get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, what is that, a toy? No, it's just a little, little push-button thing to scream on it, and you push it. Oh. And for you. <laughs> yeah, I remember when you first uh, gave me that. I was just so shocked. I was like, "What's that?" And then I, I kind of got it the second time you played it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that one. There's one I wish, I wish I had bought. I don't know if they still have it, but it's a it's a, it's a witch, and you know, and she's voice she's motion activated, and she cackles. Oh, I love her cackle. Oh, and yeah. I was gonna try to go get one, but I don't know if they have it this year. I don't know what's out there this year. A laughing, Not a lot on the shelves, I tell you. Yeah, a, a laughing skeleton. It, it, just a, it's a witch. There's a witch, and, they're, they're, and then I remember there used to be a laughing skeleton. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. That's right, talking about the Dollar Tree. Oh, yeah. The Dollar Tree. <laughs> I, I've been going I to... can imitate the, the witch so good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love the Dollar Tree. I've been going there 20 years, and at Halloween time, I get all the good stuff there. Oh, yeah. Don't like to buy any decorations. You just go anywhere else. You're really wasting your money. you got beautiful stuff there. A lot of, a lot of money, yeah. <laughs> presents, you know, gift wrapping, all that stuff. Decorating. Exactly. I know. I'm someone who wouldn't, didn't want to go. I said, okay, then go spend, money. go spend all your money at a party store, which is a silly thing to go do for one day, and then you can get the same stuff. Right. Some people think they're, you know, it's not good enough for them, but okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's good enough for me. Did you also know, did you also but, realize it's 45 years since Eaten Alive? Well, probably 45 years for everything almost. I mean, they're not yeah. actually the all same year, so. Yeah. They're not identical years. Yeah. How was making that movie? Eaten Alive was, um, it's all done on, on sound stage and then they they use that dry ice to make the fog, you know, they made the whole the whole force that I'm running away from him through Neville Grand Phone all on stage. They did a beautiful job with that. And the car that picks me up was actually my car. Um, my little Fiat. <laughs> um, but I had uh, Stu Whitman and Neville Grand, Robert England, Carolyn Jones, you know. Yeah. Was, Stu- yeah, Stuart, yeah, was, Stuart Whitman, Mel Ferrer, yeah, that's a yeah, great cast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, Toby Hooper was directing at the time. Yeah, this was his second movie. Uh, what was he like on set? He was very uh, quiet. Uh, uh, didn't even know he was there. You know, it was like a lot of directors like that. They're very quiet. You know, they're not loud and boisterous or anything. They're just, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. I was there, and, and I go, what, what's, what's Craven? I said, so what made you write these weird movies? I mean, <laughs> he goes, that's not how I started out. I did it just so I can bankroll myself, you know, into getting what I wanted to write. But then he said, he got good at it, and there was a demand for it, so he just kind of kept going down that road. But that's not what he had chosen to do, making horror films. And it just happened to work out for him. And I went, oh, okay. Because he is really quiet, meek, mild type person, you know? Just right. not a screamer, not a yeller, not, you know. You know That's what I've heard, really. yeah. Yeah. 
him. Yeah, I, I, I've talked Sorry. to people who worked with Toby on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then people who worked with him on the Hollywood movies, and they they portray a different guy. Um, the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre people portray him as kind of a monster. And then the people on the Hollywood movies per, uh, portray him as a very nice, quiet guy, but you wait, don't... Wait, is that Toby Hooper or what's Craven? Uh, uh, Toby Hooper. Okay. They portray him as a nice, quiet guy, but if you cross him, watch out. <laughs> yeah, but I said, never had that uh, opportunity, because he did quit. He did quit, but for my scene was being going to be filmed and not, so I never really got to work with him. Ah, oh, interesting. You know that? No. You that's, know that? That's, yeah. Um, the day of my big scene was Robert England and um, uh, Marty Weston comes in to the dressing room and tells me that uh, Toby is no longer with us mm -hmm. and I'm going to direct your scene. I went, what? I mean, as far as I know, this man was never, ever directed anything, ever. Um, mm -hmm. And I was very nervous about the whole thing. And yeah, they had, a, I guess, a clash of not meeting of the minds and I guess Toby walked that's what I was told so I really don't have a big story on Toby because the day I was going to be able to work with him it wasn't there oh that's terrible yeah yeah were, were you intimidated yeah. at all by the, the the movie legends on set is that what were you intimidated by you know having oh, these, no. these movie stars on set uh uh no no I mean I love to do it and I don't forget his comment to me he goes you know Normally, I don't like red lipstick on women, but you know what? It looks good on you. <laughs> so I'll always remember him for that. Yeah. 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 Mel Ferrer, he did a lot of exploitation films later in life for like Graydon Clark and Charlie Band, you know. And it, it's, it's funny, you know, I ta I've talked to a lot of those guys. And they, they told me, you know, in those days, they didn't have permits for a lot of uh, low-budget movies that they shot for and stuff. Uh, do you know if, the, if there was no permits on um, Drive-In Massacre or Eaten Alive? Eaten Alive was done on on, on on the lot, on the stage. I don't know anything. But Drive-In Massacre was definitely a uh, super, super low-budget movie, and uh, I don't know. He showed it wasn't going by SAG rules. Let's say that. Yeah, that's what I yeah. mean. <laughs> okay, there weren't SAG rules on that one, but yeah, there was SAG on I mean, a lot. But not on, not on driving. Nice. Now, I did because I wanted to give me some work, and you never know if you're going to see things you're going to ever eat anything or go anywhere. And, mm -hmm. um, it's like a spine, you know? Right. Yeah, you know, I can't believe that's still coming up, and... and know that movie or they, they use my name on it's fine but I never thought that would be anything yeah. you never know yeah you never know I felt the hills I felt something special about the hills though when we were back there in the in uh, Victorville and yeah. we were in the mountains and we were shooting and I was so in character and um, I wasn't supposed to pick up that snake because I said I wouldn't even touch a worm and they don't don't worry about it we've got this female AD she grew up around snakes we'll put your bracelet on her wrist we'll do an insert of her picking it up mm -hmm. great I don't know the time we get into there I don't know how long we were there for but I ran around the little out, leather outfit and D. Wallace said I was half naked <laughs> it was freezing cold I don't remember it being cold at all I didn't feel any cold <laughs> um, I was really become Ruby and Peter Locke came up to me in the day of the snake scene and said Janice 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 Will you pick up the snake? And I said, Peter, <laughs> you pick it up, and then I'll pick it up. So here he is. He has a, a, a baseball cap on that has a really you know long beam, long uh, uh, brim, brim in the front, and he's got a Bermuda shorts, and he has a pretty thin guy, and and he tiptoes over to the snake. The snake is just moving along, and he bends down, he touches it, and drops it, and goes, I did it, I did it. And I went. Okay, all right, you did it, I'll do it. <laughs> well, for my scene, they took an apple box, put dirt all over it, put it on the apple box, hit it with a stick a few times and make it really angry. Told me they had milked it and sewn the sides of its mouth shut so it couldn't actually bite me. And if it did, it wouldn't have any any um, any venom left in it. And that's very encouraging. And they wanted me to be eye level with it when I went 
to get the stick as it hit it a few times to make it really angry. Mm -hmm. And I just about to do it when this so far so called snake handler said, Wait, stop, stop, stop. It's for professionals and she shouldn't do that. I went, Oh my, I can't believe he just did that. I was just about to pick it up. So they found a stick somewhere on the ground that had like a fork on the end and so I could come up behind it and I could that over his neck and then pick it up and grab it mm -hmm. and then run after Mars. But you know what I found out from Michael Berryman, which I did not know? What? And I just found out not that long ago that I picked up one of the most deadly rattlesnakes in the USA. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said, you could have died. I said, you, I touched what? A green Mojave? Had no, uh, yeah, it's the most venomous, most killing. I mean, the num like number three on the killing list. I went, oh, my God, I can't believe it. They let me do that. They, I never picked it up. I mean, and then the one that I took, took, and I and I run after Mars, remember, and I and I kill him with it, and I go, ah, and I, well, that was frozen. It mm -hmm. wasn't dead frozen. I was told it was dead frozen. It wasn't. It was a live rattler that they chilled a little bit to numb its senses. <laughs> so I was holding another twice. I was holding that live killing rattlesnake, and I just found this out at one of our conventions. I went. I never knew that. Oh, my God. Thank God he didn't say anything. He said he couldn't believe it was happening. He wasn't going to say anything. You know, he's an actor on the set. He, he said they'd even go to a professional handler to get it. They were looking around at bars. Right. Anybody here have snakes? I mean, they were going around wherever they could to find someone who had a snake. <laughs> it wasn't even professional. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, that's, my. <laughs> that's definitely an anecdote Michael would know, by the way. <laughs> oh, my, yes. He just he just told me this, and I, I keep saying it. What's it called again? Because I have, I have blocked it out, the name of it, from my mind, because I just won't accept it that I did that. But it, it's the Green Mojave, so, yeah. Wow. That's a new one. Yeah, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. twice. Yeah. I had a, and then I was standing there, and we were in the gully, and... And there was a scene where I'm running, and uh, I had made Mars chase me, and the baby's in the little cave. Remember that? Stick the baby back in a little cave, and I'm running. Well, we're all down there. We're going to shoot. I'm turning around, and there's no one standing next to me. There's not a single soul. There's nobody. I'm mm. looking around. There's no, there's no crew, no cast, just me. And I went, what? What happened? A snake got loose, and everybody just went straight up the mountain and gone. Yeah. <laughs> And I was just standing there. <laughs> Didn't even know what was happening. <laughs> the snake was loose. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my god. So when you yeah, do scary, when, but, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. When you do this go uh, go off with a hitch event, so yes. so um it's a show and then afterwards do you sign autographs? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have my eight by ten so we're gonna pre order I've got some new uh Janus Blythe's uh heels of eyes with my name on it, a t shirt and stickers. People can buy the stickers we have made up, and they can pre-order the T-shirts. Or they have eight by tens. Mm -hmm. I have several different shots I've got. Like, we just added six more to my web page. So, what's I'll the bring a variety of ones? People still like to go for the classic snake shot. Oh yeah. And I do have one that's in shadow. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah. By the way, I gotta remind you to uh, send me that one you were gonna send me. Did I forget? Yeah, because remember you didn't want to go to the post office during COVID. Okay, okay, which one do you want? Uh, I'll take, you know, the snake one. Okay. The snake shot, yeah. Oh, we hang up, just, just text me your address again. I will, I will. Yeah. What's yeah, I've been doing pretty good with selling those on, on my webpage, so I have uh, over 1,500 followers so far. And oh, that's good. I started this page a couple months ago, so that's exciting. That's awesome, yeah. What's the yeah. Cra What's the craziest thing anyone has ever asked you to sign? I think I know the answer. You? <laughs> yeah. Bo what is it? What is it? Bo body parts? I don't, I don't remember. A lot of, did, I a body, did I sign a body part? A lot of horror stars get asked to sign, you know, breasts or, you know, or, you know, some kind of, <laughs> some kind of body part, you know, you at know conventions. What? You know you say that there was a guy, he didn't have anything for me to sign, and I had to sign his arm. Oh, yeah. Then you're not gonna wash this. What are you doing? I mean, no, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was it. yeah, yeah. I had a snake that I got at the top of the mountain here. We have a tram that goes straight up, you know, from Palm Springs up, 
and and stop the tram. They have a gift shop, and there was a rattlesnake, a stuffed one, of course, not a real one. Yeah. And I bought it, and I said, I like this. And I, they told me to bring something to um, Cleveland to, they're going to auction off things. And I said, I'm going to bring home my rattlesnake. So I bought the rattlesnake, and I autographed it, and told the guy the story about it. And they all went off and did their little auction. Well, my rattlesnake brought the most money out of anything that was up for auction. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was pretty cool. There's only one of a kind. There's only one of it, and so that really made it special. Yeah. <laughs> now I found another rattlesnake. It's a different one I have, and I'm holding on to that for another event like that. There's only one of that kind, and I promised him there'll never be another one, and there hasn't been. <laughs> Are you going to dress up for Halloween? You know, I was thinking about it. Oh, last year I just put on, um, not last year, year before, because last year, not last year, uh, year before I had this great makeup that I had gotten. It was like a bat stuff, and it was glittered and I should post that it's a really nice shot and this year I don't know I was, I was thinking about you know going as Ruby <laughs> <laughs> and dressing my dog as a little baby Ruby and uh, she can sell her own 8 by 10s she's so damn cute oh speaking of little, your speaking, yeah? of, speaking of your dog is, has your dog been licking your belly button lately <laughs> why because uh, we talked about that last time did we? Yeah. <laughs> she, she likes to lick my face. She, like when I sleep and she wants me to get up, she'll take, she only nine pounds. She'll lay across my neck and she'll just like pin me down and she'll just like lick me in the ear and my face and make me get up. You know, <laughs> okay, I'm up, I'm up. But I thought I could make her a little ruby outfit, a little leather outfit, get some eight by tens made for her and take her to conventions with me. Yeah. And she has her own fan club out here. They love her everywhere she goes. She's really special. Yeah, we just my dog like this. We just bought a dog over here. Ah, uh, my baby. You're special, aren't you? Yeah. He's so loved. What'd you get? We got this little um, half Chihuahua and half Weenie dog. We, you know, she's called a Chihuahua, and her, yeah. her, mm-hmm. her name is Abby. And she is just a little bundle of energy. You know, she's like a, a little kid on Ritalin. You know, she's just... Well, I've got a, a chihuahua here, and she's a chocolate brown. Mm-hmm. Her name is Miss Coco Chanel. Right. And she got... Well, that was her. She's, a, she's complaining now because she's been outside long enough with you, Mom. Um, she's got chocolate-colored eyes, and she's got little white paws. And energy, how old is yours? Mine's four. Uh, mine is... She's probably about, you know, a, a couple of months old. Oh, it's a little baby baby. Yeah. I'll send you the, the video I took of my of Coco dancing. She's a good little dancer. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So anyway, it's been really great talking to you. Oh, absolutely, Janice. It's always fun to talk to you. And um, really quickly, I have a joke for you. Huh? Okay. What do you call a boy that doesn't masturbate? Oh, well, not I don't know. What do you call a boy that doesn't masturbate? What? A liar. A liar. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get? What do you get these? <laughs> I just uh, pulled them out, you know, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Janice. Be safe at the event on Wednesday, and I hope you have yes. a fun, and fun yeah, time. Wait, what, Six o'clock, everybody. 200 South um, Indian Canyon in Palm Springs on the corner of Arenas and Indian Canyon. 6 o'clock, I'm going to start my stuff at 7, but I'll be there at 6 for anything signing ahead of time. And it's a nice, fun time. Awesome. I wish I could be there. Well, yeah, me too. Someday, we, someday we'll, we'll be together, you know, somewhere. Well, how far away are you? In, in Redding, California. Just well, about. that's not too far. You can drive in. No, I can't. I got I got shows to do this week. Yeah, what? I got interviews to do this week. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Change your mind. You know, we'll be Wednesday night. All right, love. Well, I'll text you okay. later, and you have a great rest of your day. And happy Halloween, hon. Happy Halloween. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Janice Blythe. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, she is such... A great, fun lady. And she's a bundle of energy herself with the stories that she tells. I just enjoy Janice. She is awesome. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks.
Later, dudes.